Argentina. Japan is shrinking, literally. Inside the Pacific Island nation, more people are dying than being born. I'm scared for the future of my children and my country. A demographic time bomb has already exploded, threatening to cripple the world's third largest economy. The problem is that young women are not having enough children to keep our country going. Japan's population has shrunk by a record one million since 2008. At the same time, the Japanese are living longer. Japan is home to the fastest aging society in the entire world. There are approximately 33 million people over the age of 65. That's roughly 25% of the country. And experts warn that number could reach as high as 40%. We're dealing with an unprecedented situation. He says if the situation doesn't change, and change dramatically, Japan's population will drop from 127 million today to 107 million in 2040, 87 million by 2060, and a mere 46 million by 2100. And now we have the first local transmission in Florida, and there will certainly be more. And meanwhile, Congress is on a summer recess. Many Americans have traditionally opposed late-term abortions, but the Zika virus may change that, potentially giving reason to do away with the national ban on abortion after 20 weeks of pregnancy, as many women infected with the virus find themselves in the middle of the abortion wars if they choose to end their pregnancies. Imagine a child dying from a simple scrape that becomes infected. Sound far-fetched? This spring, a Pennsylvania woman nearly died from a urinary tract infection, something 8 million Americans get every year, but hers was caused by a new, dreaded, drug-resistant bacteria. Antibiotic resistance is one of the most serious health threats we face today. We risk entering a post-antibiotic era where even simple infections can be deadly. Former FDA Commissioner Peter Pitts agrees. Shame on us if we wait for there to be bodies in the street before we step up to the plate and really begin to address this situation. For the last 70 years, antibiotics have done a great job killing our worst bacterial infections like E. coli, staph, even the plague. But now we're seeing stronger, more resilient strains of bacteria that antibiotics cannot kill. They're called superbugs. An alarming CDC report reveals these drug-resistant superbugs infect around 2 million Americans each year, killing 23,000. Pitts says bacteria build resistance to antibiotics because doctors overprescribe them. America's economy is growing at an annual rate of just 1% this year, and the economic recovery has been the weakest since 1949. One cause for that weakness has been the heavy burden of regulations that President Obama has piled on businesses. The latest rules target all kinds of businesses, and they drive up prices for people like you at home as well. During his eight years in office, President Obama has pushed out an unprecedented number of regulations, around 20,000 new restrictions that by some estimates end up costing taxpayers about $100 billion each year. All these new rules and mandates and restrictions are, are coming in on virtually every sector of the economy. And the financial burden isn't the only thing Americans should worry about. A lot of regulations have no monetary cost that can be measured, but are equally or more problematic. I'm thinking of the Obamacare regulations that, that, that limit our religious, our religious liberty. Uh, I'm thinking of FCC regulations that limit free speech. Federal judge in Texas blocked the Obama administration's mandate on transgender bathroom use for public school students. 
U.S. District Judge Reed O'Connor issued an injunction Sunday. The injunction aims to halt the federal mandate that says students should be allowed to use whichever bathroom corresponds with their gender identity. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton reportedly believes the attempt to enforce the guidelines is unconstitutional, which is a sentiment Texas and 12 other states have echoed. The Obama administration released the directive in May. Paxton said officials failed to issue the directive according to federal guidelines, and the mandate contradicts pre-existing laws. According to the mandate, if schools don't allow students to use the bathroom consistent with their gender identity, they could risk losing federal funding. Over the past several months, transgender bathroom use has been a point of contention on the national scale. In early August, the Supreme Court temporarily blocked the appeal of a transgender student who identifies as male to use the boys' restroom at his school in Virginia. And in May, North Carolina passed a bill that requires transgender people to use the bathroom that aligns with their sex assigned at birth not their current gender identity. O'Connor says the block won't solve the underlying issue and says its immediate purpose is to balance the protection of students' rights and that of personal privacy. I do welcome the decision made by Judge Reed in the Northern District of Texas, uh, and he couched it just right. You have the president uh, really converting our constitutional republic with our separation of powers into a, a dictatorship, really, where he launches directives from uh, Washington, D.C., and imposes them upon all of America in spite of or in, in overriding the consent of the governed. And that is not the type of uh, gubernatorial structure that we have here in America. So uh, I do uh, applaud the decision made by uh, Judge Reed, but it was a federal district court. So we'll have to wait and see what happens at the appellate level. ISIS is using schools to indoctrinate children to be the next generation of terrorists. The Business Insider reports the terror group created its own curriculum to teach children how to wage jihad. The children are called, quote, cubs of the caliphate and must study the core religious text of Islam. They also learn physical fitness, how to murder non-Muslims, and how to use various types of weapons. Even though ISIS has been losing territory, they continue to pass on their plans for jihad to their children. Overseas this evening and to a chilling image. Authorities say they stopped a child suicide bomber moments before he detonated his explosives. The drama unfolded on a darkened street in the city of Kirkuk in northern Iraq. Two police officers desperately holding the suspect, arms outstretched. And he's just a kid, standing there stripped and scared. You can see the fear in his face. And strapped around his torso, the suicide bomb. Carefully, the bomb is removed. And the boy rushed to safety, surrounded. His cries piercing the night, and then into custody for questioning. His bomb detonated by an explosives team. He is 12, maybe 13 years old, police say, and he told police his own father, an ISIS commander, sent him and his brother on their suicide missions. His brother blew himself up elsewhere in the city. All this less than 24 hours after that horrific suicide bombing at a wedding in Turkey. The Turkish president saying the bomber there might have been as young as 12, but officials now hedging on that claim. There's a long and bloody history of using children as suicide bombers by ISIS, by the Taliban, by Boko Haram in Nigeria. The UN says the tactic is on the rise around the world. A group of anti-Islam activists in the Czech Republic yesterday drove into Prague's Old Town Square in a military jeep while carrying Islamic State flags and shooting fake guns loaded with blank rounds. All this just this weekend. Alarm, you bet you, the group's aim was to stage a mock ISIL invasion. The activists claimed they received permission from local authorities prior to the event. However, it seems they went too far. Police were forced to step in as the men were about to perform a fake execution. Witnesses say that locals and tourists fled the square in fear. The group says they felt that stunt there was an effective way of warning people about the threat of radical Islam. The U.S. Southern Command stated in an internal report that Sunni extremists might be crossing American borders with help from smugglers in South America. A Southcom spokeswoman did not address the report directly, but told the Washington Free Beacon, in 2015 we saw a total of 331,000 migrants enter the southwestern border between the U.S. and Mexico. Of that, we estimate more than 30,000 of those were from countries of terrorist concern. Those countries include 34 nations in the Middle East, Africa, and Asia, the Washington Free Beacon reported. Part of what makes dealing with migrants from these areas so difficult is the lack of information present in the countries they choose to travel through. In 
in this case, countries in South America. In June, the Washington Times reported that roughly a dozen Middle Eastern men, including an Afghan linked to the Taliban, were smuggled across the U.S. border through a network in Brazil. Director of National Intelligence James Clapper testified in front of a Senate hearing in February that members of ISIS could be entering the United States as immigrants. But Joel Vargas, head of contingent security services and a consultant to law enforcement agencies, told the Washington Free Beacon the information simply is not true. He said evidence regarding relationships between Sunni extremists and smugglers does not exist, but that existing smuggling networks from Central America are increasing their access. From this moment, the first track combined units of the Korean People's Army are fully ready to mount a preemptive retaliatory strike at all enemies' attack groups involved in the OG Freedom Guardian. Statement by the DPRK Army's general staff called the military drill a clear provocation. North Korea may have enough plutonium to make up to four more nuclear weapons. The basis for this conclusion, Pyongyang's recent nuclear activity and the claims by the regime itself. Concerns that Pyongyang could be readying itself for a fifth nuclear test are growing, as North Korea appears to have obtained more weapons-grade plutonium. The U.S.-based Institute for Science and International Security said in a report that North Korea has managed to produce between 5.5 to 8 kilograms of plutonium by reprocessing nuclear fuel from its main reactor at its Yongbyon nuclear facility. That amount of plutonium could be used to make between two to four nuclear weapons when taking into account that two to four kilograms of plutonium is used in a single warhead. If the North stock of weapons-grade uranium is included, the Institute believes Pyongyang has enough material to make between 13 to 21 nuclear weapons, according to estimates up to this summer. The think tank's report is in line with a report from the International Atomic Energy Agency on Friday, outlining its latest assertion that North Korea had resumed its reprocessing activities. That report just came a day after Pyongyang confirmed it has resumed its production of weapons-grade plutonium through its Atomic Energy Institute. Plans to deploy 16 stealth F-35 fighters to a U.S. military base in western Japan next year. The Japanese government has informed officials in the city of uh, Iwakuni in Yamaguchi Prefecture, where the air base is located. It will be the first time the U.S. has stationed stealth aircraft overseas. High-ranking officials from Japan's defense and foreign minister ministries visited uh, Iwakuni and informed the mayor, as well as the governor of uh, Yamaguchi, of the planned deployment and the plan is to first deploy 10 F-35 jets in January and a further six in August. Japan was lashed by strong winds and heavy rainfall as Typhoon Bindele landed around noon on Monday. The typhoon, the ninth to hit Japan this year, made landfall in Tokyo and then moved north through the Tohoku region. Along the way, it swept through the cities of Ome and Iruma, which saw record rainfall of about 100 mm per hour and winds of up to 180 km per hour, prompting Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's office to issue a landslide warning. In Kanagawa Prefecture, a 58-year-old woman was seriously injured and later died in hospital. Swelling rivers and mudslides damaged houses and other facilities in the typhoon's wake. So far, 850,000 people have been told to evacuate. If the windows are broken, the wind will get in and lift the roof away, so we are worried about that. The typhoon also shut down railroads and the control tower at Narita International Airport, resulting in the cancellation of more than 500 flights. I came here before 9 a.m., so I've been waiting here for about three hours. It's been cancelled and nothing has been scheduled. The Japan Meteorological Agency expects up to 200 millimeters of rainfall for Hokkaido, Japan's northernmost island, by Tuesday evening. And with another typhoon, Lion Rock, expected to arrive by Thursday, Japan remains on high alert.
These are White Lives Matter protesters demonstrating outside the Houston NAACP office on Sunday. One of the organizers said the movement is trying to celebrate heritage and culture, but some protesters' clothing and signs could tell a different story. Video from local outlet KPRC appears to show a white supremacist version of the Celtic cross. And this video from KIAH shows a sign that seems to refer to the 14-word white supremacist slogan, we must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. About 20 members of the movement said they were protesting what they believe to be the NAACP's inaction regarding violence against police officers and destruction of property. It claims to be one of the largest civil rights organizations in the United States and one of the oldest and we feel that it is failing in its job in speaking out against the atrocities that have been happening in this country lately the attacks on white officers he said white lives matter isn't against the black lives matter movement just their actions the protest took place in a predominantly black neighborhood and almost immediately drew counter protests the confederate flag throws me off you know, because you're saying Black Lives Matter is a racist organization, but then when you throw the Confederate flag up and you're saying White Lives Matter, are you saying you're racist as well? said when I pulled up, it's not nothing I wouldn't have done myself.